When I was nine years old, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers made its debut. There are four shows in my life that make an impact, and Power Rangers was the first. I've talked about the other three extensively here. When talking about the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, what you get is a conundrum between the years of 1993 and 1996, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers wasn't just a popular show. Oh, no, 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 no. It was the biggest kid show on the planet. Full stop. McDonald's toys, motion pictures, video games, you name it. Even the music from the putty fights became billboard charters. Power Rangers Mania took over the planet and started an empire that has lasted 30 strong years and is still going on. Me, myself, I have watched every single episode. All 950 of them. For a kid show the last 30 years, especially in America, where kids' tastes are constantly fluctuating, let me state this now. It's an accomplishment that needs to be celebrated. Full stop. No arguments. This is an historic moment. First off, let me state this. This review will be spoilerific. Why? Because Hasbro has already done a lot in promoting this thing to spoil it anyway. So, I'm just going to talk about it plainly. Spoil it outright and give you a score. Once and Always is the 30th anniversary special. But most importantly, it uses the Mighty Morphin branding. This leads to the other half of the conundrum. In the 30 years, however, Mighty Morphin only occupies the space between 93 to 95 with Power Rangers Zeo taking over 96. This was the first time they used any suits other than the Zoo Ranger suits. That's the Japanese version that Mighty Morphin is based on. The Zoo Ranger suits became so popular that even when Season 2 and Season 3 happened with changes to the Zords, the Die Ranger Zords, Thunder Zords, and the Kaka Ranger Zords, or the Ninja Zords, by the way, these are their Super Sentai names. The Zoo Rangers were still the primary suits of function outside of Tommy's, which came from Die Ranger when he switched from green to white. Outside of that, Power Rangers has moved on to many different powers and individual stories. A lot of these having small references in the special, but not a massive impact. This is a Mighty Morphin special. More or less, this is a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers epilogue of sorts. An epilogue that has come 30 years or so too late, but one that is greatly appreciated. When the special was announced, the key thing was the return of Billy Cranston and Zach, Zach Taylor, <laughs> done by Walter Jones and David Yost, respectively. David Yost who was last seen going to Aquatar to restore his youth in Power Rangers Zeo 
has not been seen in the show or even referenced since. A lot of this is due to due to homophobic hazing and hatred from the old Saban production crew, something that has become well noted in Power Rangers history. That's right, kids. Your first Blue Ranger was homophobic. 30 years before it became cool to do so, Billy broke an unknown barrier, something that it would take Power Rangers itself until the recent season Dino Fury with Izzy to finally crack the code of representation in that way, having the first lesbian relationship in the show. Something that Hasbro has held into high regard and has celebrated. But the fact that Billy and Zack are back got the old school Mighty Morphin fandom all in a happy tizzy, including myself. But they're not the only ones returning for this epilogue party. Rocky, Cat, and, and yes, even Adam and Aisha make a return. Adam and Aisha being members of SPA, or Space Patrol Alpha, making a link to SPD. Sure, they have a small role and they don't do any fighting, but largely their presence is loved and noted. References are plenty in this special, from references to where old castmates are, to powers being referenced, to places like Terra Venture. There are more blink and you miss it things, which makes this feel less of a 30th anniversary special and more of an epilogue to Mighty Morphin itself. But the fact that this special goes through the added mile to link the canons of these multiple shows together into one cohesive whole and is referenced as such is a nice touch. Although I would have loved a battle on a grander scale to get the old powers involved. The plot references a returning Rita Repulsa, now in a robot body. Again voiced by Barbara Gordon, once again, and she nails it, to gain revenge on the Rangers for her defeat. All the way back in Power Rangers in Space, they, they make reference to what the fandom noted as the Z-Wave. This is the event in which Andros, the mighty, the Space Ranger leader, managed and unfortunately had to sacrifice Zordon for the good of the universe at the end of Countdown to Destruction. Still the best troop carrier the Power Rangers has ever put on. But since then, she's her energy was also transmitted in the Z-Wave. And unfortunately, due to a mistake caused by Billy, Rita is back. And she's looking to use time travel to get her revenge. In fact, this plot is straight up ripped off of the episodes Green No More from Mighty Morphin Season 2. See, Rita wants to contact her 1993 self and tell her that she's gonna lose a lot and prevent the Rangers from even getting together. But not before in present time taking care of Trini herself. That's right, this special acknowledges the death of Tui Twang, 
years and years after a real life death in a car accident. Thankfully, it's done with respect and class. Her daughter, Min, wants vengeance and wants Rita to pay. She is the main protagonist and the point of view in this story. It's more of her story, learning, learning the ups and downs of true heroism and the difference between justice and revenge, as she wants to assume the Yellow Ranger power, power and make sure, sure Rita pays the price for taking one of their own. And she most certainly does. And the moment of her morphing into the saber-toothed tiger ranger is actually very well earned. I want to see this character in Cosmic Fury. I really do. She is a great actor with a great character. I want to see her again. She as well as the nostalgic Parts of this special are the best moments of the special. There's even some great emotional acting early, but of course, this is dropped for nostalgia plenty. The old dinosaurs coming back, the old morph call from 93, down to the effects. Even an Alpha Robot, and even seeing a new school version of the Command Center. All these things are fantastic and worthy. The nostalgia in this special is fantastic, although, again, not completely nostalgic to the 30-year history of Rangers. But, if you treat this as a Mighty Morphin epilogue, this certainly does it. The special even memorializes and is dedicated to not only Tui, but Jason David Frank, who we lost just six months ago. Which gives this special a bittersweet memorial feeling. A last time for old heroes. A last goodbye to the past. And unfortunately, Power Rangers future past Cosmic Fury is yet unknown. Hasbro is still keeping that future under wraps. I have watched all 950 plus episodes in real time. I have been a fan my entire life. This special not only makes me proud that I have been a fan for that long, but yes, it's one of those instances of God I feel old, but also, if Mighty Morphin ever needed an epilogue, it got one, a pretty good one at that notion. This special is a 7 out of 10. A great nostalgic ride that could have used an extra 30 minutes for, for Rita's evil plot to be more, more or less described, or even for more emotional bits. But, outside of Outside of its pacing, this special does exactly what it needs to. Celebrate the OGs. Celebrate it well. Power Rangers continues to prosper. If you would have told me in 1993 that I would still be watching new material from a series that has made so much of an impact on me. Because in my life, I didn't have any real-world heroes or interaction with people. 
So for me, the Power Rangers were my role models, my moral center, on top of Hulk Hogan telling me to say my prayers and eat my vitamins. It's good to see, see all of it get one last send off. It will always be morphin time. No matter what time it is. If you want more Power Rangers reviews, tell me. Besides, the entire history of the series is on YouTube. Except for the special. It's on Netflix, of all things. Where Cosmic Fury will also be. When it debuts in the fall. Until next time, I'm Nirvana Sparkle. Find peace in your own Nirvana. And may the power protect you. Always.